I have done lots of chalk testing over the years. If you want to check out past videos and results from both me and The Billiard Corner, visit the resource page linked in the video description. In recent years, several expensive chalks have appeared on the market with claims of much improved performance. These chalks cost 20 to 30 US dollars per cube compared to traditional master chalk which can be as cheap as 50 cents per cube. So are these premium chalks worth the huge price differential? In this video, I present four simple tests anybody can do on their own to test and compare the performance of any chalks. I also test Medium Hardness Predator Pure, Kamui Roku 6, and Taeom V10 to see if there are any real performance advantages over Master Chalk. The first test determines if there is any difference in the amount of spin that can be applied with each chalk. The miscue limit is the farthest out the tip contact point can be from the center of the cue ball while still getting a good hit. This limit is an important performance measure since it is directly related to the maximum spin you can impart to the cue ball. For this test, I hit many shots with each chalk, really pushing the limit. I use an elephant practice ball since the miscue limit is clearly indicated by the red circle. But you could also use a standard striped ball instead. As a baseline, I tested master chalk first. After many attempts, the farthest off-center I was able to hit was with the edge of the chalk mark right through the middle of the red circle, as expected. It is difficult to see the chalk marks in video, so here's a clear illustration of what I saw live. Here's the best hit I got with Taeom V10. The first thing I noticed about V10 is that it goes on the tip more easily than the previous Taeom chalks, so this might result in fewer miscues for some people. Although, if you chalk carefully and properly with any decent chalk, as demonstrated at the link in the video description, you can't blame miscues on the chalk. Taeom does not stick to the cue ball very much, which as we will see later is a good thing, so it is difficult to see the chalk marks, but the edge of the mark was also in the middle of the red circle. With all chalks, if you hit beyond the miscue limit, a bad hit results. Here, the edge of the chalk mark is on the outer part of the red circle. Here's the best hit for the medium hardness Predator Pure chalk. Again, the edge of the chalk mark is on the red circle. Here's an example miscue with the Predator chalk. No chalk can prevent tip slip if you hit that far beyond the miscue limit. Here's Kamui Roku 6. The first thing I noticed is that, unlike with the early versions of Kamui chalk, Roku does not go on the tip and stick to the cue ball like lipstick. Again, this is a good thing. The new Kamui goes on the tip much like the other chalks tested in this video. Here's the best hit I got with the Kamui. Again, the edge of the chalk mark was on the red circle. All chalks I have tested over the years, including the new premium chalks, have the same miscue limit, so there is no performance advantage in this category. The second test determines how long the chalk stays on the tip by seeing how many shots can be hit before getting a miscue. For people who do not chalk before every shot, as they should, or who don't chalk properly or carefully, this performance measure could be important. After chalking the tip, I hit the cue ball in the same place with the cue in the same orientation with the joint label up, so the same part of the tip hits the cue ball, cleaning the cue ball after each shot. I aim the center of the tip at the center of the red circle, creating a tip contact point well within the limit, but still with a significant amount of spin. Again, you can accomplish the same thing instead by aiming at the edge of the stripe on a standard stripe ball. Here are the results for each chalk, starting with Kamui Roku 6.
All the chalks had good persistence on the tip. Although, any good player chalks before every shot, so this performance measure really isn't that important unless you don't chalk often. The next test determines how much and how long chalk marks stick to the cue ball. This is important because chalk on the cue ball can lead to cling, also called kick or skid. Here's an excerpt from my previous chalk testing video that explains and demonstrates why cling is a problem. Cling is an excessive amount of throw caused by a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point. Here are some examples from my previous chalk test video. With clean ball surfaces, the 13 heads to the corner as expected. However, with a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point, cling causes a miss. Here, with clean ball surfaces, the cue ball follows forward as expected. But with a chalk mark at the cue ball object ball contact point, cling causes the cue ball to hop and lose much of its top spin. Here it is in slow motion. Here are some examples from the recent 8-ball world championships where cling happened in two consecutive games. Cling does not happen often, but it can occur more frequently with chalks that stick to the cue ball too much. Here, it prevented FSR from getting the shape he expected on the next ball. See it? Oh yeah, yeah, just skidded on him. So it didn't come out as much as he wanted it to. And here, it caused SVB to miss a shot and lose the game. Whoa! Oh, well, hello. That, that was a huge skid, huge skid. Notice the cue ball hop and the huge amount of throw and spin transfer resulting from the cling. SVB was using master chalk, and as we will see, it sticks to the cue ball more than the newer premium chalks, creating a greater risk for cling. For the test, I hit the same shot with the cue ball in slightly different orientations each time to see how much the chalk marks persist on the cue ball. I started with master chalk. After each shot, I observed where the chalk mark was and turned the cue ball slightly for the next shot. After three shots, I looked to see if the chalk marks remained on the cue ball. All three marks were visible, with the last being the most prominent. Again, each of these marks can cause cling and a miss on a future shot, so we don't want this. Here's the same test for the other chalks. Teom left so little chalk residue on the cue ball, it was difficult to even see them. The Predator chalk also left very little on the cue ball. The Kamui chalk also left very little trace on the cue ball. This is much better than with the original Kamui chalks that went on the tip like lipstick and really stuck to and stayed on the cue ball, which is very undesirable. Since persistent chalk marks can cause cling and missed shots, it is a good thing the new premium chalk marks are minimal and wear off quickly. The final test determines whether or not cling occurs with a fresh chalk mark for each brand. I set up donuts for frozen balls lined up straight up table. Here's a straight shot to show the expected direction. I also placed donuts to create an accurate and consistent hit with no side spin at a 45 degree cut angle. The cue ball hits the 1 into the frozen 3 and into the ball frozen to the 5. The normal amount of throw for clean ball surfaces at this angle and speed is about a third of a diamond. To test each chalk for cling, I first hit a firm stop shot to create a fresh chalk mark on the cue ball. Here's an example of what the chalk mark looks like for this tip at this speed. After the stop shot, I placed the chalk mark at the contact point between the cue ball and the 5. Then I hit the shot to see how much throw increases. The first chalk I tested was Kamui. A fresh chalk mark does result in significantly more throw than normal, called cling, skid, or kick. Here are the others.
Surprisingly, all the chalks tested resulted in very similar amounts of cling. Chalk marks with the new premium chalks do not persist on the cue ball easily, but a fresh chalk mark does result in cling, so cling is a concern with all chalks. Although, it is much more of a concern with chalks that stick to and persist on the cue ball more easily, so master chalk is less good in this regard. And chalks like the original version of Kamui and other cosmetic style chalks that really stick to the cue ball create far too much risk for cling for both you and your opponent, so these types of chalks should not be used. So is an expensive premium chalk worth it? Well, if you think it is, it probably is. The mind is a powerful thing. Chalks that persist on the cue ball less are definitely worth it since they will result in less frequent cling. However, cling does not occur very often, even with master chalk. But when it does, it can cause you to miss a shot and maybe lose a game or even a match. So for top players, the new premium chalks, which are cleaner and do not persist on the cue ball, can offer a small advantage. However, as I showed with the cling tests, all chalks can cause cling if the chalk mark is fresh. Regardless of which chalk you use, you should always clean the chalk marks off the cue ball every chance you get, before each break and every time you have ball in hand. And if you see chalk marks on the cue ball during a game, ask the referee to clean them off if that is an option. Concerning other performance measures, the miscue limit is the same for all chalks I have tested over the years, including the new and expensive premium chalks. So there is no difference in how much spin can be imparted with different chalks. Some persist longer on the tip than others, but this is really not an important performance measure since good players chalk carefully before every shot. If you want to test and compare chalks on your own, I strongly recommend the methods I demonstrated in the video. They are easy to perform, and they provide a pertinent and objective performance evaluation. For more test results for other common chalk brands, see the videos and information on the resource page linked in the video description. And if you are curious about qualitative differences among the brands, including chalk shape and size, color, grittiness, cleanliness, and how it applies to the tip, check out the Billiard Corner videos on the resource page. Have fun doing the test on your own, and good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.